Welcome to Circuit Valley. I'm Gaurav. Today I'm going to talk about a something niche, something very very niche. In front of you, you see this contraption. This is a normal Raspberry Pi with a Micro City light, PCI hat and there is a small little PCI UART card is connected on top of it. So what I'm going to show you today, this kind of stuff has never been published on internet before. We will try to eavesdrop or we will try to wiretap the communication between the PCI and this PCI card. We will probe on this PCI connector and we will try to use our oscilloscope to find out how does this card talks to the PCI, what kind of packets they are sent from the Raspberry Pi to PCI. Raspberry Pi supports Gen 2 PCI communication on this card edge and this little card of ours, it supports PCI Gen 1 cross 1 link. Card looks something like this. The card edge looks something like this. It's a Gen 1 connection and we will use our oscilloscope to probe here. I have a really fancy oscilloscope to, for this purpose. I have one MSOS 804A. It's a 8 gigahertz oscilloscope. As it's a PCI, PCI is not something which you deal with every day. It's not I2C with 1 megabit or 400 kilobit per second. This PCI Gen 1, Gen 1 is 2.5 gigabit per second. And for the 2.5 gigabit per second, you need a really, really fast oscilloscope. You also need a really, really special probes. So I'm going to show you the probing techniques and how easy or hard it is to decode, to, to eavesdrop PCI communication happening between a card and a host. We will also try to reverse engineer this UART card and the communication between these two guys. So we'll probe right there and this is the TX part from the Raspberry Pi side and RX part is on the back. So we'll probe both of them. Maybe I'll show you how the both of them looks. Primarily we are interested in the one side that how does the Raspberry Pi send something and on, on the other side you see my normal oscilloscope is connected there and this oscilloscope is connected to the output of the UART. This has two UART channels, you see the two drivers and one of the UART, both of the UART channels are coming onto this big big serial port like connector and uh, oscilloscope is measuring on it so when we send something as we, as we are trying to reverse engineer, when we send something we are supposed to measure what we sent as a text to the UART terminal and what comes out. So I'll use my oscilloscope to monitor this terminal and also say at the same time try to find out when I send something over PCI or over the terminal how does it get transmit and at the end at the end it reaches the connector so this kind of contraption is really helpful PCI is not something you can easily handle so if you try to have a PCI LAN card or PCI any other type of card for example VGA card to be able to understand its content first of all you need to understand the card itself here there are basically no complications this chip it's just a UART to PCI bridge and UART we already understand so data which is going to be there the only concern we have right now is the PCI itself we do not have the concern on top of PCI layer what is lying so that's why I have decided to make this experiment with really really easy card with this card you will be able to easily understand what is going on on the PCI bus so let me show you the probe this is one end of my 1158A this is a 4 gigahertz single ended probe and we'll probe something like this. I'll show you I'm not going to probe right now because it's not very easy. Something like that. And we will try to find out if single-ended probing is enough because PCI is a differential signal. And let's, let's, uh, let me show you the oscilloscope as well. So this is my oscilloscope setup. This is the MSOS 804A. And I have already decoded one packet there already with the PCI because I experimented a bit before recording everything. I'll overlay my web view of this oscilloscope so that you can play along and uh, we will try to probe and measure for now I will remove this decodation window and everything else and so that I can show you my setup let's turn off the decode for a second so you see PCI signal on your screen this is the signal which this is the signal which uh, this is the signal which Raspberry Pi is sending towards the PCI card if you want we can zoom in a bit and so that we can take a look so this signal was recorded in single-ended, not in differential or anything else because holding differential probes and preparing setup is quite a bit of effort. That's why I decided to just record a single-ended. Let me set up a measurement so that you can see how big of a swing it is. So we have peak to peak around 400 millivolts and if you see the frequency, frequency it says 807, 872 megahertz, which is definitely not true. But uh, we will try to, I'll set up a marker and so that you can see it a little bit better. So let's measure here from peak to peak. This is the half period of the waveform and you see the half period is 2.4 gigahertz 
which is the bit rate because the transmission is DDR not really clock aligned DDR but uh, clock embedded DDR and uh, you see this PCI is 2.5 gigabit per second so you get the pro you get the clock frequency of around 2.5 gigahertz you do not get you do not get any repetitive signal in these kind of embedded clock signals so one whole period of this fastest going pulse is around 1.5 gigahertz 1.25 gigahertz so of course we are looking at the PCI gen 1 transmission and let's zoom out so that I can show you one more thing you see this PCI stuff is coming in burst I believe the Raspberry Pi is doing it to so save power and, and uh, something like that and it is sending in between electrical ideal signals so you see these where the gaps are between these bursts that's the electrical ideal time PCI does support this feature this I think it's called PCI electrical uh, electrical ideal order set or something like that so there must be a packet coming right here I'll show you where this packet should be coming so right here where my marker is M2 there must be electrical ideal signal electrical ideal electrical ideal and they will be doing right in the beginning of the packet like quick link discovery so I'll let the oscope run and I will recapture so that you can see along with me so UART signal is connected to channel number 4 and I'm having a small script I copied some English string I copied some English text from internet and just let it run to the loop and it will transmit few few hundred characters and then stop for a hundred milliseconds or something like that and then transmit one more time stuff like that this is one frame so th by this we will be guaranteed that there will be some activity happening on the PCI because when you prove the PCI you need to be make sure you need to make sure that there is actually data going to be there I'm holding my probe let's see if the signal is there signal is there we are at very high level so you see these are small status stuff and behind that our UR is once continuously being transmitted and sometimes you see these large packets these are repetitive status packages BLPs and other other sets sometimes you see some little bit different things these are our our uh, so called DLPs will increase the time base or the voltage base so that we can have a signal better range available okay the disk scramble need to be enabled because uh, some parts or some PCI card use it for, for better noise immunity I'll do manual setup so you see this packet this is the big packet this is where our data is and these small packets they are other order sets so let's try to set up a decode and we will find out if it works or not it doesn't really work till now it detects some order sets here but electrical ideal order set, electrical ideal order set but these are not our packets so now we have it I believe this is still not very valid so you must see these all training this and that these are all your this is the fast training sequence whenever the packet starts you see this on the left side there's a red packet everywhere and there are blue in the in the window so these are the fast training sequence so when you have electrical ideal order sets after that you have to immediately call up this fast training sequence to 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 find the link or find the uh, or, or establish the synchronization that's why they call it at the start of every packet you see small blue that's what our decoder is recognizing as fast training order sequence and uh, that's just basically mandatory if you have these kind of electrical ideals between them this is also one debugging methodology you can enable the recovered clock and let's look at the recovered clock maybe we will to judge if we have something right or something wrong we should look only where the packet is if the electrical ideal is being transmitted and you're looking at the clock so clock is definitely wrong clock is definitely wrong we'll try to adjust the clock frequency we'll try to find out why it's not working it's still showing invalid 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 even though 
you see the fastest fastest pulse and you exactly see that let's measure the clock and markers delta says 4 gigahertz this is not right so this is my current setting like because the bus is sitting on the zero line so I have set it 250 millivolts you can set it to different levels depending on your bus so what is primarily important so this is primarily important and you see it allow you to choose different different things reset for example if we have for example if we have PCI Gen 1 no SSC SSC means spread spectrum clock you can get better EMI performance with the PCI generally people have it enabled and stuff like that wait a second let me see if I have enabled the clock I have enabled the clock let's turn on the protocol decodation and we will look at the clock itself we'll see the protocol decodation has definitely failed and this rectangle line which you see along with the channel number one this is the recovered clock so if we zoom in at a proper place we should be able to see it soon so we'll zoom in in the data packet somewhere so you see that our analog signal is overlaid on top of the digital signal and stuff like that and uh, this digital signal is what recovered clock is it is very very important to have a good recovered clock otherwise your decode will not work let's measure how much it is they have measured they have recovered exactly 2.4 gigahertz so they have recovered it absolutely correctly generally if your protocol decodation does not work it has to do with this clock I got always success with rather than choosing rather than choosing a preset I will select my clock and I'll set it manual there constant 2.5 gigahertz remove markers so you see the clock recovered is also shown data is also shown and we see some valid packets being detected let's zoom out not that much yeah this much will do so you see I'll select one packet every time this packet comes up this link training start fast training sequence and after that SKB order sets come and electrical idle so at the end of the packet comes electrical idle and then come few invalid packets they're supposed to come in the end because this uh, electrical idle has come so PCI our state machine of decodation has failed for some time same stuff on the next package comes something like that and now comes the interesting stuff because this is the TX channel from the Raspberry Pi side there are read requests we are right now interested in the right request because uh, we want to see the UART which is being sent over the link and uh, we want to see that so there are none of these write requests happening PCI generally sends data to the PCI cards through TLP TLP means transaction layer packet and PCI reads and writes to the PCI device with these TLPs so for this 3DW 3DW means 3 double words memory read request 3 double word memory read request okay and there's a read request happening on the read line on the on the backwards line or the reception line you will see some data or ans or answer for this request so we want to find out right request we will try to trigger one more time and we will try to find out if we see some right requests because right requests must also be happening let's zoom out a bit we will capture 200 or maybe this much and uh, with 20 giga sample per second let's verify because scope doesn't tell you 20, no 2 giga sample per second will not do 5 10 giga sample will do we will uh, leave it 20 giga sample with 1 mega samples try to find out one more time if it detects so I'll let it run I am triggering on the TLPs not triggering on uh, on edge or something like that or I'm triggering on edge let's look at the trigger itself setup we are triggering on the protocol TLP any packet okay so I'll probe one more time and you will see the new data get captured and you will see what what the decode output is what's the decode results are you see these 
sequences are coming and sometimes comes the big packet with a lot of data. Let's do a single capture. One more time, single capture. One more time. So we see one large packet. It's the same packet. There are read requests, no write requests. Same packet. Now we see a different packet. Okay, this is our packet of interest. And now I'll show you. These are the read request, read request, read request in this big fact packet which you see in the front on the right side. And there are write requests, and you will find it interesting. What is the content of the write request? It says H. It's supposed to write three double words, and the payload is shown here as four bytes. E R space I believe so V E X E D dot is 20 space 20 space I guess I'm not that expert expert on this guy so this is appears to be every single this memory write request appears to be having one character I have verified this this is exactly the data which I am sending I've got this random text from internet somewhere I just copied into a large file and it's constant continuously transmitting maybe I'll show you what is the transmission content maybe I'll show you on my other scope so baud rate is 9600 I just measured it it's not 115200 does it decode yeah, it decodes. Let's change the bus display to ASCII. So you see these individual bytes. Let me do a lingual. Let me do a single capture, and I will show you on the bus. What does it show there? Okay. So some delightful continuing in appetite, constant opinion, hastened by handsome admitted. It's just random text which I copied from internet. So this text is being con constantly transmitted over the over the UART bus, and that is the text which I get. I uh, got published. So let's see if we find something. Let's get back to our uh, MSOS 804A. So you see, every single if you want I can follow O, N, N, space, L. E A R L E A R N learn after learn M A I T S M A I D S I don't know what does it mean but uh, this is what we got on on our scope and it works really really perfectly well I think for this quick video this much reverse engineering of a PCI card is enough and you can see the inhalt or the content of this every package and every single 3DW write contains only one character and uh, everything else is filled with zero because this bus is so fast so I cannot make a correlation between the PCI and uh, UART so there we have to live with ourselves so I think we are done with the PCI as well this is quite advanced of a niche of a thing I hope you find it interesting and you will be able to find this thing useful if you find this useful and you're looking for more detailed videos about PCI then you drop a comment I have experience in PCI with FPGAs and everything else so I can make more details video there as well so thank you for watching You can visit my website www.sakirvali.com. I'll be publishing more videos about MIPI. There will be video coming about USB 3.0. And possibly if you like, there will be more videos coming about PCI as well.